Yes, I know my thumbnails are getting sillier, deal with it. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it has actually been a while since I've talked about anything input related, so let's talk about gamepad vibration. So, uh, this is the 2D uh, sample project, which I have been uh, working with for the better part of the last, say, two years or so. Um, I've edited it so that when edited, that's hard, I've modified it so that once you, uh, you walk into one of these dog guys, um, you, uh, you take a bit of damage and do a little bit of flashing for a couple seconds. And, uh, today, in this video, I'm going to be implementing gamepad vibration. And I died. Alright, that's great. Let's, uh, let's close this. So, uh, the code is... I mean, as far as implementing damage goes, it's pretty much as simple as it gets. So if you, uh, contact one of the NPCs, you'll go into the hit state. Uh, you'll stay there for one second. And you lose an HP. If you lose all your HP, you die. Uh, that's usually how you know, HP works. So let's talk about gamepad vibration. So Game Maker has a handful of, um, uh, of vibration functions built in. Maybe it's just one. Uh, we're going to actually, uh, ignore those because it's pretty basic and not very interesting. And we are instead going to use the, uh, the Marvelous Input Library. Uh, I've already configured input in this project. Um, this, uh, the verb setup looks something like this. Uh, let's see, and um, I'm going to assume that you are uh, familiar with how to set that up. If you're not familiar with how to set up the input library, I'm going to recommend the uh, the introductory video that I made on that, because we're going to be using it here. So there's a couple of... Uh, there's a couple different input vibration related functions that you might want to use. The, I suppose, simplest one is going to be input vibrate constant, and that is going to enable a constant vibration for a certain amount of time. Uh, if you want some more fancy uh, vibration modes, there's also input vibrate, um, where is it, pulse. Uh, this is one I'm personally a fan of. Uh, that will do a, um, a pulse-like vibration, which follows an intensity curve sort of like this. Uh, there's input vibrate, uh, what's the next one I wanted to talk about? Curve. So that will follow a Game Maker animation curve. You can have some fun with that. I'll play around with that later in the video. And uh, lastly, input vibrate ASDR. Uh, ASDR is a scary sounding acronym that stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. Uh, that is a, a concept which I believe is taken from audio design. And it allows you to define a, um, a vibration intensity curve that looks sort of like this. I will get into that later. Uh, let's see, I suppose first we might as well start off with a um, little demonstration of input vibrate constant. How this works, uh, you can set a strength or an intensity from zero to one. Uh, I'm gonna go with one. Uh, you can pan your vibration left to right. So again, uh, much the same way that you might do with audio, panning audio uh, left to right on one speaker or the other. Um, I'm going to set that to zero. Uh, zero is the middle, minus one is gonna be to the left, positive one is gonna be to the right. And we have the duration argument. So. This can be one of two things. Um, by default, I believe input timings are set to be um, defined in frames. I personally think this is a little bit awkward. So if you want your vibration to last for one second at 60 frames per second, you can enter 60 frames as your duration. Um, if you would prefer to do your timings in seconds, or at least seconds adjacent units like I usually do, uh, the input timer milliseconds macro, uh, this is a configuration macro, which can be found in the input config general code file. Um, you can set this to true to have your timings and input work, uh, both for vibrations and just elsewhere um, in input when it comes to timings. Um, you can have it uh, use milliseconds as its timing um, measurement instead of frames. Uh, I'm going to set that to true because I just, I, I like it better like that. Generally recommended. Um, let's see, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to set my duration to now 1000 because we're going to want, um, you know, 1000 milliseconds equals one second. Uh, the two optional arguments to pretty much all of the input vibration um, functions are the player index. If you have more than one player and you want to handle uh, gamepad vibration for a specific player, you can set the player index. And uh, there's also a force argument, which you can use to force a gamepad vibration if um, you have input vibration disabled. I hopefully will remember to uh, maybe suggest some situations where that might actually be useful later. Anyway, I'm going to run the game now. Uh, I am going to um, walk around. 
Uh, let me get this cat cat cursor off my screen. Uh, if I if I walk into you, my gamepad is vibrating. Uh, I don't know if you can really hear it doing that. Um, let's see. Can I put this uh, like down on my desk without it completely sounding terrible? Let me find something to um, like a book or something for me to put this down on. Okay, hopefully if I put the gamepad down on like a notebook or something, you'll be able to hear it vibrating without it sounding completely terrible. All right, and I died. I'm very interested to uh, to hear what that's going to sound like in the recording. Anyway, so that's gamepad vibrate constant. Realistically, that's probably what you're going to be using most of the time. If you want something a little bit fancier, uh, we have, uh, let's comment that out, input vibrate on a curve. And again, this will take a game maker animation curve and it will uh, set the intensity based on the uh, based on the game maker animation curve values from again zero to one. Um, I don't even remember why I have these in this project, but um, I do have two animation curves ready to go in this project: um, animation curve cubic in out and animation curve elastic in out. I'm going to. Um, Realistically, I don't know if I'm going to be able to communicate subtle variations in the intensity of um, of gamepad vibration uh, in in video form. It's really something that it helps to have in your hands, like physically, if you want to be able to get the full effect of. But I'm going to go make a little example of animation curve cubic in out. Um, let's see. The arguments to this are going to be uh, the uh, the maximum intensity is going to be a one. Uh, the curve AC cubic in out. Uh, the other two arguments are the same, so the panning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just center that, make it zero, and the duration. Um, you know what, let's make this last for two seconds. Um, let's have this uh, these iframes last for two seconds instead of one second. Uh, that might be a little bit more helpful. And then, of course, we have the option of player index and force vibration values, uh, should you want them. So let's run the game now, and let me put this gamepad down on the desk. And if I walk into you, okay, fine, I need to click on the game window. If I walk into you, all right, and for whatever reason, input disengaged there for a minute. But anyway, if I walk into you, uh, did you hear that? Vibration getting more intense over time? This is such a weird video. Anyway, uh, that's how you might use an animation curve uh, with input vibration. Not sure if that's something that you're going to be using all the time, but it is cool that it exists. Lastly, and I'm going to comment out both of these here, but uh, let me go over up a few lines to uh, when the player actually dies. And um, I'm going to demonstrate an input pulse when the player dies. And uh, I'm going to leave these two down here disabled, uh, commented out so that, well, since I'm primarily demonstrating this through sound, uh, I don't want the potential for these to be like a distraction. Anyway. Uh, pulse is going to fire off a series of um, pulses in vibration. So it's going to start and stop vibrating not just once, but a, um, a number of times in series. So let me set the strength to zero, the pan to zero, or the strength to one, the pan to zero rather. Uh, the number of repetitions. So if you want the gamepad to pulse three times, you can set that to three. And of course the duration. So this is the duration over which the um, like all three pulses are going to... Um, play out. It's not the duration of each individual pulse. So if I want uh, three pulses to last for one second each, I would put in 3000 milliseconds like this. This is actually something that took me a while to figure out the first time I was messing around with gamepad vibration here is that I thought um, the, uh, the duration argument was for like each pulse individually. And uh, as a consequence of that, they were all lasting like a really short amount of time and I didn't know why. Anyway, so when you die, when you take three damage, we're going to have the gamepad uh, pulse three times over the duration of three seconds. Uh, let me run the game. Going to have to uh, take some damage on purpose if I want to um, before I get down to this point. All right, so last health. All right, you hear that? Three pulses. All right, so lastly, we have uh, one more function, input vibrate ASDR. So this can be a little bit more tricky, a little bit trickier to, uh, to explain. This is by far the most advanced input vibration function uh, in this whole, this whole thing. So again, uh, ASDR attack, decay, sustain, and release uh, allows you to create a, um, 
basically a vibration intensity curve that looks something like this. Uh, again, if you're familiar with audio design, you might have seen this before. You have the attack portion, you have the decay portion, you have the sustain portion, and you have the release portion. Uh, and you're allowed to set the um, the timings of each of those intervals. You're allowed to set like the uh, the sustain level, so how far the uh, vibration intensity decays to before leveling off and and fading away at the end. And I really don't want to turn this video into just a showcase of me tweaking values and seeing what happens, especially since one, I'm recording this at 2.30 in the morning because reasons, and um, B, because I am trying to communicate gamepad intensity vibration through just listening to it rumbling on my desk, uh, which is perhaps not the most engaging way to do this. So instead, um, if I were to run the game now, hang on, let me actually uh, comment out this pulse. I don't really care if I die but I don't want extra vibrations getting in the way. Um, I've gone ahead and made a little debug panel. Can you tell I've been having fun with these since I made that video on these like a week ago? Um, we can now um, play around with each of these values. So the peak strength, the sustain level, so this part of the, um, the ASDR curve, as well as the timings in milliseconds of each of the, um, the intervals. So if I were to... Um, so I had to put the gamepad down and click the button here. You can hear the very brief attack portion, the uh, the decay when it falls off to about half strength, and then the sustain and release uh, periods. It might help if I were to, um, let's say, make these a little bit longer. Uh, let's have the, oh yeah, cat toy, hilarious. Uh, where was I? Let's have the decay last two seconds. Let's have the sustain last a little longer, maybe three seconds, and the release can last uh, one second is good. So if I um, if it vibrate now, you can hear that there was an initial rise, a decay period, a fairly long sustain period, and then a uh, about one second of fall off, in which the gamepad, as it happens, almost literally fell off my desk because it is sort of wobbling around as it vibrates. Uh, because of the physical motors inside the um, inside the handles. Anyway, if you have yourself a gamepad capable of vibration, I would definitely recommend downloading the sample project and uh, playing around with these values if you're interested in ASDR. One last thing before I end it off, I, uh, I did say that I would circle back to this eventually, but input uh, vibrate, where is it? Set pause. Uh, you can like permanently pause input vibrations perhaps for like an accessibility settings thing if you don't want if you want to allow the player to just turn off vibrations full stop because maybe some people think it's annoying uh you have input vibrate set strength uh which is similar you're allowed to set the global strength of um input vibration uh you do of course have input vibrate get pause and get strength in case you want to like get the values that are currently set uh these each of these uh, you can also set a, a player index, so you can individually uh, enable or disable vibration or vibration strength for individual players if you are making a local multiplayer game. And uh, this relates to what I mentioned before with the, uh, the force arguments for, um, for each of these input vibration functions. Uh, and admittedly, the only reason I can actually think that you'd want to do that is if you are creating a settings menu itself and you want to like force the gamepad to vibrate so that like the player can feel what it feels like right there in the menu, uh, regardless of what the current setting is. And uh, I can't really think of many other situations where you would want to do that, because usually when the player turns off gamepad vibration, they want it to stay off, but maybe you can think of one. Anyway, I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want to play around with the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. If you have a gamepad in your possession, which is capable of vibrating, I definitely would recommend going and playing around with the ASDR menu. Uh, if you're curious to, um, to play around with those values, see what they feel like. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, such as 3D stuff and shader stuff. I actually haven't done much of those in a little while. I'd like to get back to it, uh, hopefully soon. Anyway, I also have a Patreon, uh, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found that interesting. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos.
If you want to help out, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.